Hi guys, so if you've been following me, I'm pretty sure you know that this is probably my mm, fourth to sixth video regarding college and school in Berkeley specifically, but I wanted to make this video even outside of Berkeley, just what your first year of college might be like because because when I say that college might be the most transformative and independent time of your life, I mean it. Um, so I compiled a list of everything that I think I learned in my first year of college, but just to preface, I technically didn't get through my entire first year of college because of the current state of the world right now, as many of you are aware. But you know, I still believe I got a lot of the same experiences that everyone going through their first year would have, and so I still believe that I was fulfilled and that I can turn this back to anyone starting college or anyone who's watching this who would like to reflect on their first year of college and they can relate to any of this kind of stuff so some of this stuff is going to be Berkeley related and some of it's just gonna be pretty general kind of both so for those of you who don't know Berkeley is a music school not Cal Berkeley Boston Berkeley there is an audition process there's an interview there's a whole shebang about getting in and I've done a few videos about that if any of you guys have seen my uh, week in the life of college video I'll link it up here if you haven't I filmed that the second week of school and I and it's kind of crazy just to see how different of a person I am since that. And that video was only filmed in September and it's only April. I think at the time that video showed so much and then I look back now and I'm like, wow, I hadn't even experienced any of the stuff that I did following that video. And I have a very different perspective on things now and like, not in a bad way, but it just how things seemed in that video it just ended up so different as you get used to things in a new place. So the first thing I want to talk about is regarding Berkeley as a school. Um, the number one thing I learned in college is that it's kind of a fine line where music 24-7 is genuinely the best thing in the world that you can go to a school where everybody studies music and it's all you do 24-7 and there's so much to that because every single person you speak to, you have something in common with. And that's not something a lot of college kids can get. Anytime you're getting to know someone, the first thing you talk about is music and it's convenient and it's a great way to make friends. On the other side of that, I think around December, or January, there hits a point where music eventually finds its way to consume you. That is something that you independently need to learn how to handle yourself and what works for you. I remember around like December, I didn't write a song for a little bit of time. I felt overwhelmed with school, I felt overwhelmed with my social life, and I felt overwhelmed with just a lot of things that kind of added up and I ended up learning that I love to exercise and I ended up learning that I like to go outside. I like to get a cup of coffee if I have the money for it and I like to go on a walk and play music and be by myself. And that was something that my roommate took a second to figure out and I know she's watching this. Hello, Giselle. <laughs> um, yeah, I figured out that that's what worked for me is being alone and I think that that's not for everybody and I'll get to roommate stuff in a little bit, but my roommate knew that I liked to be alone and she respected that and I loved her for that and that was the best way that I could stop being creative for a little bit and then immediately get back into it once I was able to just clear my head and do my own thing. So the main point is just knowing that at Berkeley. So back to my main point with that, it's studying music is genuinely the best thing and in the times that it's not, just learn how to handle it. The next thing I wanna talk about is my roommate and your roommate. Berkeley over the summer did a Facebook page, which I think a lot of colleges do. And you could talk to people on there. I met a couple people off of there. I met my friend Tony, if you're watching this, hello. I talked to him for a lot of the summer and I met Giselle, who is my roommate, also on the Facebook page. And it was strange because she, I think trying to find a roommate can be the weirdest, most coolest, most scariest thing in your life because the number one thing that you're afraid of, and I know, is to choose wrong or do random and hope that the world doesn't choose wrong for you. Giselle had messaged me on the Facebook page and she was like, hi, are you looking for a roommate? And I was just like, oh no, like here we go. And I was like, yeah, I actually am looking for a roommate. It's a weird thing to know so little about someone even after discussing hobbies and interests and deciding that you're gonna live together because you don't know everything about that person. And you know what? I learned, I learned that in the nights where I would talk to my mom and say, I'm so nervous to have a roommate. What if she hates me? What if I don't like her? I had to remind myself that she feels the exact same way about me. And that enters my main point about how when you're choosing a roommate, understand it's hard for both of you. And if you're going random, it's hard for that other person to go random too. In my move-in video, which I will also link up above, I actually filmed the first time I met Giselle. I didn't really show any of us talking because I just, I was with my parents and it was weird and I didn't know her or her personality. And 
I remember the first day we met, I had no idea what I was getting into. We ended up having lunch together and take the time to get to know your roommate in the beginning, form a bond, even if it seems somewhat artificial at first. Learn as much as you can about that person without overstepping your boundaries. Remember that it doesn't always need to be easy. I remember the night my parents left, I cried that I'm gonna be living with this girl. I'm sorry, I know Giselle is watching this. <laughs> I have to live with this girl for the next year of my life. I psyched myself out at that time and you know what? I'm grateful to the world that it worked out for me and I love her and I'm living again with her next year. Something my mom told me was, your roommate doesn't need to be your best friend, you just need to live with them. And if that's how it ends up for you, then I consider that a win. I feel like you should never feel uncomfortable in your own room or unsure of your roommate and their intent. And I think it's really important to make that stuff clear. If you want a refrigerator, who's buying it? If you want a microwave, who's buying it? How are we splitting the cost? What are you okay with? What are you not? What time do you go to bed? It's just a lot of things that if you can establish a basis and work around it, even if it's not always your first choice, you will get along with your roommate just fine. So, kind of Berkeley, kind of just general college, I say do your orientation week. Um, I'm aware that for a lot of other colleges, I'm pretty sure it's like a couple weeks before, if I'm not wrong. I remember at Berkeley we moved in and then the entire week following was orientation week. So it was just a ton of activities. You were put in a group with some random people and you all were kind of like forced to get to know each other. You didn't have to, obviously. It's just enforcing a way to make friends. During orientation, you think, do I need to go to this stuff? Is this necessary information? I want to go hang out with my new friends that I met last night if I don't go hang out with my new friends that I met last night and I go to my orientation meeting and I miss out on what my friends are doing am I gonna not be in the friend group I get it but you know Berkeley's orientation week is actually kind of fun you do like a there's like an outdoor barbecue there's like a little dance thing on like a block on Haviland and it's like it's fun and you get to know people and by the end of that week you're talking to a few people and then it's so important to be open-minded and it's not to say like be fake to people or just be a weird version of yourself. And I wouldn't consider myself the biggest extrovert at all, but I think it goes so far just to say hello to someone or just to ask why they're at Berkeley, why they are studying what they're studying. If you're at a normal college, what, are, what is their major? What's their background? Where are they from? Don't let people scare you because remember every single person is in the same exact boat as you. <laughs> And then the last thing for anyone who might relate to this on a heavy level, I'm very close with both my parents and I remember the day that they left was a day I would never want to repeat because it was like we went to dinner and at dinner we were all kind of sad because it was just unspoken the fact that we were going to be saying goodbye that night and there was nothing we could do about it. It might feel like the worst feeling. You need to promise yourself that you got to switch something in your brain that says I am in college now, my parents aren't going anywhere, I can call them and it's gonna be fine. I need to focus on school. I need to make some friends. I need to plan out my life. And if you can just switch that part of your brain and make it something positive, then missing your parents will turn into something that's more nostalgic than something to get sad about. That kind of ties into my next thing is call your parents often. I'm not saying every hour or every single day even. I used to call my parents or my mom like every four or five days, every three days, maybe like three times a week and it made me feel like I could live at two places at once. Yeah, it gave me something to break up my week. It made something very familiar and yeah, so definitely call your parents. So that kind of sums up like the beginning part of college in my experience. Now I want to get into the stuff that's kind of things that I learned all throughout. Number one, time flies, especially if you're working hard. At a normal college, you know, even if you're undeclared, find your passion and what makes you happy to do schoolwork and what drives you to do schoolwork and focus on it. And I know basic general ed classes genuinely suck. People think we don't take those at Berkeley, but we do. And specific to Berkeley for a second, if you could just take those classes that you write papers in or things that maybe the professor talks about that you could give two shits about. If you can turn that into something that's like, oh, you know what? This kind of breaks up my day a little bit. Like I'm studying music all the time. So this is kind of a nice class to go to that has nothing to do with music some of the time. I promise you'll get a lot out of it if you can switch that part of your brain. I genuinely love writing, I like English, so I look forward to those kinds of classes. And also tying into working hard. To walk out of a class, for example, like an ensemble, and feel good about yourself and know that you put the effort in and you did something great, 
can genuinely be the best feeling. And even when you walk out and you're like, wow, I could have done so much better that day. Or like you walk out of your training and he or she was checking a melody and you butchered it in front of your entire class. That should motivate you to work harder. I can't stress enough the fact of being a musician. Take your failures and turn them into something great because then when you actually succeed at something, it is genuinely the best feeling in the world. Number two, the amount of independence you gain is nuts. Back to my first video with the week in my life thing. Since September to now, I have changed so much as a person independently. What's so funny about it is you don't notice it until you think about it. Felt like kind of a dependent person my first semester at Berkeley and I recognized the entire second semester that I was very independent. I'm not gonna say I did that miraculously or subconsciously. I was definitely aware that I was becoming more aware of myself and just like the things I thought and how I treated people and it was just kind of a switch. And it's crazy because in high school, I thought I had a lot of independence, you know, my parents trusted me. It was like, go out with your friends if you want, do what you want as long as you're safe and you tell me. But in high school, you're independent with your parents and in college, you are independent with yourself. You make your schedule and you control your entire life and it's up to you. It's important to learn how to do that. Number three or four, please go to class. Do I wake up some days? Did I have like three or four 9 a.m.s first semester? Yes. Do I have three 9 a.m.s now, which are actually 6 a.m.s because of the time difference in LA? Yes. Did my roommate and I debate together whether to sleep in together a few times? Absolutely. Dizelle and I both knew that it was very important to go to class. And to say that Berkeley is cheap is not valid. Feels guilty to know that you are not getting your money's worth, not going to class. So go to class, get your money's worth learn something, even if you know what the teacher's gonna teach that day, doodle on your paper, or I don't know, zone, think about the person you're dating at that time, I don't know, like, just go to class. <laughs> now into sort of the fun stuff, um, go out on the weekends, do stuff with your friends, hang out with your friends, even on the weeknights, get your shit done, and then hang out with your friends the whole night. I would, I remember most weeks, I would get my schoolwork done, hang out with my friends, or I would have conversations with Giselle for four hours until one in the morning. Or on the weekends, we would go to a house show, or we would hang out in one of our dorm rooms and just have fun, or watch a movie and have a movie night. And of course, outside of Berkeley, go to sporting events if you have one. If you're interested in being in a sorority or a frat, do it. Berkeley doesn't have that stuff, but join things you might even maybe be interested in. Next one's kind of a funny one, but I think it's important to say, don't worry who you date. <laughs> Genuinely, don't worry who you date. I, people are meeting each other for the first time in college in a weird setting, okay? So frankly, it does not matter. If you can learn to focus on yourself and your schoolwork and your friends way more than you do on parts of your social life that frankly take up way too much brain power, as Giselle and I would attest, please do it. <laughs> You've got four years to figure it out. Again, going back to my social point, just be open with people. And of course, don't beat yourself up or regret the people you involve yourself with, but also just recognize that it's, it's college. A lot of people have different mantras about dating and relationships and stuff, so let the world do the work. This is one that I'm proud to have actually followed most of college, which is shocking. Eat food and eat a semi-balanced diet if you can. I used to eat breakfast every morning. Towards the last end of second semester, I didn't because of all of what was going on and I needed, I, my brain was elsewhere, but yeah, eat breakfast. If you're not a lunch person, get a snack, eat dinner. Have, have pizza with your friends sometimes. The cafe is pretty good food, breakfast specifically. Dinner depends on the day, but I do love the breakfast there. They have everything. They have healthy things. They have yogurt, granola, eggs. So yeah, on the weekends, go wild. Have some pancakes and some waffles, but on the weekdays, eat something that'll fill you up for your classes that day and just be aware of what you're putting into your body. That's it. <laughs> this one's quick. Public bathrooms get easier. They kind of suck in the beginning. It's kind of like, am I really about to wear flip-flops in the shower every single time I shower? But I promise it gets easier. You get used to bringing your little thing into the bathroom. And if you're lucky to live in a dorm that has a bathroom or if you're at Berkeley and you live in mm, sometimes 270 or 150, you may have your own bathroom. I lived in 160 and Giselle and I had to walk our butts to the bathroom down the hall, which was, you get used to it, I promise. The second to last thing is kind of individual. If you like to write, or if you're a songwriter and you enjoy remembering things, journal your first year of college. I've touched on this in a previous video. I keep a journal, it says 2020 on it, but I've been logging since maybe around like November of last year. And I did a page of my first year of college pictures that I love and 
I kept a lot of memories in this thing and I think it's so fun to look back at. These are pictures that Giselle and I had in our dorm and I took them down with me when we moved out. I think when you're 40, it's gonna be the coolest thing to look back at this, like who you dated, who your friends are, what school was like, how stressed out you were, how happy you were. It's honestly the coolest thing. I still read like the beginning passages of this, not even a year later and I'm like, oh my God, I like can't believe I was ever like that. It's good to remember things. So this was kind of a long video, but I want to leave you guys with one last thought. This is specific to Berkeley. Enjoy living in a city. It doesn't seem like it sometimes because we don't really have a campus, but I don't know, my little friend group and I went to a baseball game at the beginning of the year. We took an expensive Uber and went to an apple picking farm and we got pumped, we looked at pumpkins. Yeah, we did things as a friend group that isn't always music. And that's very important, I think. And that's a lot of good memories. My last point is to find your passion and run with it you should let musicians and other people uplift you rather than maybe in one way distract you or make you feel less than because it's just not true. Help the people and support the people who are in the exact same place you are. And I remember before I went to Berkeley, I found this article from this person online and his last point was, quote, focus, disconnect, don't be distracted. And a part of me loves that idea and a part of me thinks that that might ruin you. To say that as a musician you need to work hard and you need to remember why you're there and what you're there for is in fact important. It is. Studying music is again the best and sometimes the scariest thing and I think the part that says focus is true. It does pay off and you get your money's worth but the part that says disconnect and don't be distracted. Part of that's true and a part of that I think you always need to remember that you mentally cannot live a life where you are just by yourself all the time and focused on one thing so much that you forget to focus on yourself and be healthy with yourself. I've always been someone who's not necessarily very self-image oriented, but it's super healthy to be aware of yourself and how you handle yourself as a person and how you treat yourself. And I think giving yourself the mantra to disconnect and don't be distracted by other people can in some ways be a little, it can be a lot. By all this, I just mean, remember that you're human and you're living life. And Berkeley is a four year time span of your life and you're gonna learn a lot. And your classes are almost gonna force you to be so focused. So don't add that extra pressure to yourself. If you go in with a good mindset and you go in knowing what you're probably gonna get out of it and trying to love the things that maybe you might not, you can get a lot out of it. And it's not to say that just because I personally love going there doesn't mean you will. And it doesn't mean that someone who says the school sucks doesn't mean that you will not love it. So I think if your gut says to give the school a chance, I think you should. Sadly, my camera died, so I'm on my phone. The last question that I wanted to answer is something that I keep getting. It's what's your biggest advice in the admissions process? And I kind of give a, yeah, I'm aware of that answer, but it's so true. Play something you love be yourself, that gets you way further than you think it might. And this part might sound strange, but there is an unspoken understanding between you and the person who's watching your audition in making it seem like you are confident in yourself and you are confident in the music you make and you are confident in what you have learned as a musician your entire life thus prior. And even if you're not, even if you're not and you, have, you generally don't know what you're doing and you're nervous because you don't know what you think you should know, go in there looking like you would be the best fit for the school. And I promise there's a chance, there's a part of them that thinks you just might. So yeah, kind of a long video, but I think this was a really fun one to make. And for me, this is gonna be a fun one to look back on. All right, Giselle, ready to go.
excited. Um, even though we can't leave the house currently, I turned 19 in June and I'm hoping to have some part of my summer left. And I hope those of you going into college also have part of your summer left. If you're not having a graduating ceremony or in California, we do something called grad night where we do Disneyland. If that's not happening, I'm sorry. Take this video as something that I want you to look forward to because I think college is something you don't know because everything I thought college might be is somewhat everything and somewhat not at all what I thought it was gonna be and that's super cool. Thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.